Seven sixteenth, bottom paragraph. Okay, so he he explains. He says if a person's mindset is that whatever happens to you, you take it in a positive vein, and you s accept the suffering as either because I've met the challenge, it has value, or it's even more than that because I need the kapora, I need the atonement, and I accept it happily, accept it because I understand its value. So there you have a double value. Firstly, you have kapora. And in addition, you have the reward that you didn't question. Right? You met the challenge. The ultimate result of the suffering will be good. And the reward, you guarantee the reward. Therefore, you should not allow your mind to be vacant from this perspective. You have to have this perspective. Whatever happens, life has, is for reason and is meaningful and has purpose. If you have that mindset, you have no problem. Then your suffering will be identified with Hashem. He says, as a result of that, it will be lightened. It will be easy for you the pain and the bitterness of the suffering. As they say, you know, it's a bitter pill. You may have taken the medication, it's a bitter pill, but because you understand it's medication, it has value. So all suffering is really doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be a kapar. Well, if it's kapar, it's definitely a test. But if you don't need the kapara, theoretically, if a person doesn't need that, that, that level of kapara. The person doesn't need that level of kapora. Sometimes you could have two things happen simultaneously. The kapora maybe would have been enough less, and Hashem gives you that ec extra to bring it to another level. And despite that, no questions. I accept it. Then you brought to another level. The suffering always has always has value. Always has value. There's always a reason for that. There's always. But well, watch. You love your child. Well, I didn't slap you this morning. If you love your child, you slap your child. You only <coughs> discipline him if he has to be disciplined. If he doesn't have to be disciplined, what's the point of disciplining him? Even though the Gemara says in, uh, in Marcus, when uh, Shlomo says in Mishlei, spare, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child, a child has to know where the power lies. And every once in a while, you have to, even if the child doesn't deserve a certain degree of, of discipline, to, that, that he should, shouldn't forget who has the upper hand, he has to be disciplined. Even in a situation where he doesn't have to be disciplined, because the child will forget. You know, it's my buddy. My buddy, is he makes decisions, I make decisions. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's more Marcus. Okay. That's why people make mistakes. The Torah says that the two mitzvahs in honoring there's honoring of a father, a parent, and there's revering a parent. <coughs> right? You honor. So what's reverence? So the Gemara says a child should not sit in the seat of his father. If the child doesn't sit in, in, in his father's seat, what does that mean? He's not my buddy. I sit in my buddy's seat. Your father's seat, you don't sit in. That itself is sufficient to discipline. It sets the mind of the child understanding we're not on the same level. This is my father, this is me. But if the child sees no difference between himself and his father, mm -hmm. then it becomes a problem. Okay? And you'll have an understanding of the goodness regarding Hashem's decree. And you'll have consolation. Be strong that your heart take courage. All you wait expectantly for God. We had a Gemara in, in, in Avodah Zoro. You know, the word pick, to pick at. It's a Hebrew word. The Gemara quotes a postal that says that when Hashem punishes us, it's like a rooster pecking 
in, in the ashpa, in the garbage. Rooster goes, pecks, looks for little seeds to eat, pecking. It says pick. It picks around, picking. So, you know, pecking order. So, uh, the verse says, what is it? Moshal ma'adavadome. You have a king, and the king offers two loans, one to his closest friends and to a stranger. And he says to his friend that he l lends the money to him, he says, you know, every month I want you to make a payment towards the loan, although it's a 30-year loan. Every month I want you to make a payment. And to the stranger he says, the due date is 30 years. The debt, the debt has to be fully paid in 30 years. So the intimate of the king comes to exist. It doesn't make any sense. The stranger, you give him 30 years, he has no pressure until 30 years. Me, we're so close, every month I have to have in mind to pay the debt. Why? Why are you, you mistreating me? He says, no, you don't understand. He says, oh, it's very difficult to pay off a loan. And if you let it accumulate to a point and it comes a due date, it may be beyond your ability to pay it. So therefore, even though presently it may be a little bit of a distraction that you have to pay it every month, but when it's time that it should be paid off, it will be fully paid off. And the last payment will be a small payment. He says, the stranger, it's irrelevant to me. If he pays it, he pays it. If he doesn't pay it, he will be punished very severely, maybe even with his life. He says, only because I love you, therefore I'm setting these terms to the loan, which I didn't give him those terms. Okay, that's the Gemara. So therefore the debt, therefore throughout history, Hashem always punishes us. Why? Because ultimately when the nations of the world will come to Hashem and say, we all, we, they also have debt, Hashem says, no, they pay their debt. You people have debt, unpayable debt, which you can't deal with. If that's the case, you people have to be destroyed. And at the end of time, Hashem will destroy them, and us, there's no claim. We already burnt the mortgage by the end of time. That's the Gemara. So the Chofetz Chaim says, writes, that there's a consolation. He's speaking about a consolation. Suffering, there's a consolation. He says, this was the time right after World War I. Things in Poland were very difficult. Mm -hmm. Discrimination, anti-Semitism, is before Hitler. And he says, there's a consolation. What's the consolation? Because before Mashiach comes, the, the final payment has to be made. So because he, this is the final payment, we have to put it in a positive vein. That suffering, this is payment of death. <coughs> and if we accept it as we should accept it, then we'll merit the Gula. That's what the Chavot Chaim said. So he's saying something similar. That whatever happens to a person, what is the consolation seeing the value of the pain? If you see its value, then you don't, you don't have that bitterness and the anger of this negative experience.